So uh, I just felt um, in my heart to do a subject I've done years ago, but I, I felt drawn to give it away again and to, and to talk about it. And I want to talk tonight about the mercy of God, our, our need for God's mercy and our need to operate out of God's mercy. And uh, religion and religious people come out of a base that's not based on God's mercy. But you know what? God's whole action for the, all of humanity is nothing but mercy. And if you, and if you understand that and get, capture his heart, it can change the way you flow in life and take the stress off you and take all the people struggle and get so tied up in knots. I'm telling you, the mercy of God will set you free. So I want to read one verse out of Hebrews 4.16. It says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Is anybody in a place of need tonight? It says here that we can come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy. First it says mercy and grace to help in time of need. So let's just pray. Father, I just believe you that you're going to touch us through the word of God tonight, that your word is liberating, your, your word is strengthening, and your word causes us to walk at another level of freedom and victory. And we receive it tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Now listen, I... 25 years ago, God gave me a lesson, and it was a lesson on mercy, which... Um, I am a product of the mercy of God. That's what I am. I'm, I'm here because of the mercy of God. 25 years ago, a doctor, a, a group of doctors told me that I had 90 days to live. That's three months. And that um, prepare to leave the planet. Well, I'm here. And that was 25 years ago. And um, I was redoing the book and re, I'm redoing it. And as I was doing it, it just brought back the memories and it brought back everything I went through and it brought back, I'm not going to give my testimony necessarily today, I just want to speak about the subject of mercy. And the Lord, the Lord showed me great mercy, that's all I'm going to say, showed me great mercy. And in our lives as we live it before the Lord, the more we understand that that the kind of nature, the kind of God we serve, we serve a God of mercy. We talk about faith. We talk about our need for faith. And these are true. But I want to show through Scripture, mercy started before faith. And mercy will continue after faith. Faith floats as a ship on the ocean of mercy. God is a God of mercy from the Old Testament to the New Testament. If there's one attribute of who God is, he's a God of mercy. Do you mind if I share a little bit here tonight? So God's mercy, let's talk, let's, let's talk about God's mercy. God's mercy, just as introduction, is so great. It's greater than all the sin of men and women combined. God's mercy is it's without fathom. In fact, I was talking today with Bishop Kenyon, and he's studying about all about the Hubble telescope and the greatness of the universe, and you know how they keep finding more and more galaxies, and how the galaxies incorporate billions of stars. One galaxy is billions of stars. So they said there was 100 galaxies, and they said there was a billion galaxies, and they said there was 100 billion galaxies, and now they're at a place that's between four to 500 billion galaxies. That defies what your mind can grasp. And he says, here's what they're finding, because we talked about it. There's no end. When do the galaxies stop? They like to, in science, talk about the years and how the creation was put together, you know, how it all came about, the Big Bang Theory. We believe in the Big Bang. God said, let there be light. Bang! There was light. <laughs> we believe it just happened quickly, but God did it. And so if, if to picture the bigness of God, that God would create a universe that's so big that your mind cannot calculate it. 
because it, it defies what your mind can grasp. That's how big he is. And God says in his word, my mercy to you is bigger, is higher than the highest heavens. It's unfathomable how big his mercy is. Now I've got some Aramaic people here, and some sure knows some Hebrews, gotta be careful. <coughs> but it's either Shesed or Hesed is the Hebrew for love. But it can also be for mercy. They're close because really God is a God of love. Mercy is an outflow of his love. But mercy and grace, we talk about mercy and grace. But mercy, a little bit different than grace. Because what, what, what mercy says, this is God's action towards us. And mercy says that you're not going to receive what you deserve. Let me just be honest. Every one of us, I'm talking to myself now, deserves hell. You got that? According to the word of God. Based on the fact that we, that we rebelled against God, and God says the penalty is death, which is separation from God eternally, which is a place that he's actually designated, the center of the earth, it's called hell. And you don't end up in hell forever, because actually hell, at the end of a 1,000 year reign, is somehow sucked out of this earth and thrown into the lake of fire. Where is that? I don't know. Does God say it? Yes, he does. But the point is this, Jesus is the mercy of God extended to the whole earth. That's who Jesus is. He is mercy. And we've got to look at our, 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 our God because the Bible says he is slow to anger but filled with mercy. He said his anger may endure for a moment but his mercy endures for a lifetime. And I found that, per, that when, when we stand in the reality of this mercy and understand how powerful it is, it'll affect how you live your life. God is the God of mercy. He is a God of mercy. Remember when they built the old covenant? They, they, had the, they had the tent, the outer tent, and they had the inner tent, the Holy of Holies. And then he constructed them to build an ark, 42 inches long, 30 inch, 31 inches high and 31 inches wide. And he said, I want you to put the Ten Commandments right in there. The law. We needed the law. Paul says, without the law, I would not know I had sinned. The law points us to the fact that we have sinned. But then he said, I want you to build something on top of that ark. I want to build two cherubims that face themselves. And God gave that a name. He called it the mercy seat. That lid is a representation of Jesus Christ. That the mercy of God covers the Ten Commandments. And that God said, in fact, I saw you can look at Psalm 81.1. He says, God says, I am a God who I dwell between the cherubims. Meaning that he's talking about, I dwell in the mercy seat. That's where I live. I am a God of mercy. And we understand the greatness of God's love and that he is first a God of mercy. In Psalm 145, um, 145 8, it says, the Lord is gracious, give us these words, full of compassion, slow to anger, and great in mercy. Ephesians 2, 4 says, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love with which he loved us. You know, you know we're the hardest on ourselves. Sometimes we show the least mercy for us. Is it true? And yet God is so gracious in his mercy to mankind. And sometimes we need to look at ourselves through God's mercy and through God's grace. I remember when I was going through the whole treatment process, my story was I was going to get healed by faith and faith alone. And the, and the longer I stood, the doctors thought I was crazy. They said, you got 90 days to live. Now you got 60 days to live. And I was pushing it into 50 days to live. And I was, you know, in my mind, I said, no, I'm going to get healed by faith. But you know what the Lord told me? 
The Lord said I was full of pride. Ouch. How can I be full of pride? He says, you are standing there, but you are not, you know, faith, faith works. Now, here's where the pride comes. <laughs> we want to say, well, my faith is there. No, if your faith is there, there's a connection. You've got to realize, you know what? I've got to be humble enough to say, my faith is not the level where I can receive straight from heaven at this time. I've had other healings, but I couldn't receive it this time. And the Lord showed me, you know what? You need to be humbled a little bit. And he showed me how that, he gave me examples, like the rule of Capernaum. This guy is dressed beautifully, and he runs up to Jesus, and the Bible says he threw himself on the road in front of Jesus. That's pretty heavy duty, especially you consider the dirt roads. Number two, if you've ever been in countries where they have animals that travel, there's all kinds of things that end up on the road. And the reason I know these things is because I went on a mission trip. I went to the Philippines and was at at 3 o'clock in the morning. We left off in a boat. And the, the taxis were all donkeys with carts. I didn't think anything of it. So about four of us, five of us, we get up and we put the luggage on this kind of like stone pier. And then we threw it in the back of this Toyota. And yours truly was assigned the back of the back enclosed in glass with my other partner. And all of a sudden, the smell became horrific. And I realized someone had placed their bag into the defecation of a donkey. And you don't know how bad it is until you sit there. I had to go for three hours. I was saying, please give me, please give me air back here. Give me air before I choke. But I'm telling you, for that rule of Capernaum to throw himself down, it showed great humility. When blind Bartimaeus, well, I'll get to him a little bit later, when he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, he was willing to make a fool of himself. Because the the, the Bible says the disciples tell him to shush. You know, this is, you realize this is Jesus. He's important. And you're making a racket here. This is distracting. But he wouldn't be stopped. And so the Lord began to speak to me, and he said, listen, you need to understand, you need to take the treatment, but you need to keep walking in faith. Amen. And so, in the midst of all this stuff I was going through, is before I was touched by Brother Rodney, here I am pastoring a church, and here I am having to preach, and here I am getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And I'm one of these guys that I like to pray, read, study, fast, prepare. But I was so out of it, I couldn't do any of it. I could barely read for five minutes and fall asleep or get little glimpses of the word. But I was determined not to get a substitute because it was just my way of fighting back the devil. And I'd get out of my seat and stand behind this pulpit not having read anything particularly, not having prayed that much, but simply saying, God, I'm throwing myself on your mercy. Now, all I'm saying to you is I sat there time after time, and when I would sit behind the pulpit, it was like this download from heaven would come. And the anointing would hit me. And all of a sudden, I get revelation. I get more revelation in five minutes standing behind the pulpit than I would studying at my study. And I would stand aside and look at myself and say, I know that's not me. I know that is the mercy of God because it's not me. I know it's Him. You know what the Lord told me? He said, you need to do that every time. I don't care how much you fast, how much you pray, how much you study. You lean on my anointing. You lean on my mercy for everything you do. It's, it's the way to live your life. Amen? Amen? So you don't get stressed out and uh, burned out. People get burned out in ministry because I'm telling you, if you get outside the mercy of God, you get into your own efforts and strength, it'll flat wear you out. People, now I love people, but people can wear you out sometimes. Because you can, I, I love everybody. There's some people you can never please. It's never enough. They always want more. It's never right. 
It's, it's like, it's endless. So we have to realize, you'll never satisfy everybody. Just get over it. And some are going to bite you. Some are going to be, you just, but you love them where they are. You know what I'm saying? Just, uh, because I'm going to have mercy. Because Jesus said, you need to show mercy. He said, love your enemies. Do good to those that treat you wrongly. Pray for them. He said, because you better show mercy so I can show you mercy. And I'm under, I know I need mercy. So I'm going to be a mercy dispenser in Jesus' name. I am going to be a major mercy dispenser. And I don't, get, I don't like to get around people that are always running people down because they are condemnation dispensers. And the Pharisees of, the, of our church world, are the, uh, I mean, they want to run people down, always find out what's wrong. And you know what? We know a brother may be wrong, but I don't want to even talk about it. I just believe in God for the restoration. And, you know, I think we, get, we, 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 we need to keep this wonderful balance even in the world we live in. Um, we were talking about how a young man came to their church bishop and he said he was so sweet and so kind and after a while we figured wait a minute he's of the other persuasion so we began to share love to him we just shared love to him we just, we just embraced him he kept coming to church and, 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 and he said he treated us like we were his mom and dad but we said, now, we're a church. You know, we don't agree with this lifestyle. This is not where you're at, where you, where you need to be. So he was equivocating, and he was very successful, and he had money. He said, he kept coming to church. My wife and I just kept reaching out to him and showing him love. What was that? Mercy. But then he came to a church when he said, I now have HIV AIDS. And then he was dying in hospital. He says to, he, he, he called us in. This is just recent. He said, you know what? My family... We're church people, and they completely cut us off and never talk to us. And so I'm going to die, and I'm willing all my inheritance to you guys, which was quite substantial. He had owned homes and nice houses. He had a yacht up here at, on the, at the marina at uh, Lake Lanier. I'm just going to give it to you. He said, we're in that place, and we begin to share. I said, now listen, you're dying. You need to understand that Christ died for you. And they went through the whole gospel message. You know, they said, at the very end of his life, he surrendered his heart and gave it to Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, now listen, isn't that wonderful? Amen. Then when he died, then all the relatives find out that he did what? And they all showed up for the stuff. Isn't that amazing? You know what they said? He gave them so much money. He said, we'll keep it. He said, we don't want any of it. You can have all the houses. You can have all the cars. You can have all the boats. You can have them all. We don't want it. But the mercy of God, the mercy of God, mercy of God. We've got to be so careful about how we handle other people. And um, because if, if you're not careful, you can turn into little Pharisees. And the scripture talks about that. I love these scriptures. Where t- Remember this, Jehoshaphat? He we went out there, 2 Chronicles 20, and they had the three, ar- the three nations coming against Israel, and they were far greater in power and in might, and they went to God. They said, God, what are we going to do? And he told them, I'm going I'm to set a deliverance for you. You're going to have it supernaturally. And the Bible says that the choir they sit in front of them had this refrain. It said, the mercy of the Lord Oh, what does it say? Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. God's going to have mercy upon us, even though we don't have enough stuff to make the army to be, to, to be a winner. We don't have what we need, but God, we're looking to you. We're looking to you, your mercy. We don't have anything. They were literally using Hebrews 4.16. We're going to obtain some mercy that God will show up supernaturally and give them the victory that they didn't even deserve but they received it by the mercy of God. Amen? Amen? And so in this whole quest for the mercy of God we've got to be so careful we don't get into religion. Jesus says, he said you Pharisees are going to mix it up. Micah 6, 8 said he has shown you a man what is good. What does the Lord require of you but that you do justly and you love mercy. And you walk humbly with your God. You love mercy. And Jesus said to them, he said, listen. 
I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I want to show, I, you know, you've kind of missed it. You've kind of missed what you're, what you're supposed to be doing. And I tell you, as Christians, we've got to be so careful. Even when we deal with a world that's going to hell in a handbasket, Jesus said from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what, to, what they're doing. And our people are blinded by the spirits of hell. And we've got to see that they are blinded. My wife and I, because my son and I have this one thing in common. We like to go after people that are a little bit different and that people would just write off. They're like, they come in, they're a little awkward, they don't relate well, they say the wrong things, they do stupid stuff, and people want to push away from them because they said they're strange. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And uh, my wife says, you know, you're just like, but I enjoy taking people that the world says they're writing, we're writing them off because they're awkward, they say stupid stuff. Don't even mess with them. I just have this challenge. Maybe it's the Pygmalion complex that I just like to see people brought in that seem like way out and show love and show time and give value by giving them time. And just watching God begin to take someone who the world says, well, they're a zero. No, watch God turn him into a hero. Watch God take someone that said that'll never work. Watch what God does. Don't ever discount anybody. Never write people off. In fact, the mercy of God will astound you. I was reading in this book by John Perkins how he said this family was the pastor and his wife and they were taking care of a mother and her child who were two children who was estranged from her husband. The husband comes into the house and kills or shoots the dad and the mom. The mom dies. The two kids are like 13 and 7 that belong to the pastor's family. He said the pastor recovered supernaturally, even though it was shot in the chest. This, the other guy was sent to prison, the, the gun who shot the gun. He says, so the kids grow up. The dad dies in six years out of heartbreak. So the kids are raised by an aunt. The murderer gets saved. Then he comes out of prison. And then... He says, I want to meet the two kids that were on that dining room table when I came in, but I'm not the same man. And the story will rip your heart. But you know what? Both those kids, they stood up and said, you know what? We receive, we receive you in Jesus' name, and we forgive you, and we show you mercy. And she's written a whole book now, that, that young lady, and has become like a national seller. Because even it moves the world that you could show mercy to the, those that... In the, you would say, they don't deserve mercy. Amen? They don't deserve mercy. But yet God says, I'm telling you, I'm going to show mercy. I'm going to show mercy. So God's a God of mercy. God is a God of mercy. And I think about Paul. I think God chose Paul on purpose. He said, I want to make a demonstration of my mercy. I'm going to take a guy that's the leading Pharisee. I'm going to take a guy that has done more damage to the church than any other person in the New Testament times. This guy has chased people down, locked them up, beat them up, and even killed them. I want to take this guy, and I want to take him, and I want to make him the greatest herald of the gospel of everybody else, just to show you what I can do through my mercy. And Paul talks about it. He talks about it. He said, listen to this. This is out of uh, 2 Corinthians 4.1. He said, since we have received this mercy, or uh, since we have received this ministry, as we receive mercy, we do not lose heart. He said, I received a ministry from, from the Lord Jesus Christ. And it came through mercy. He showed me mercy. And I'll tell you what, you've got to understand this in the eyes of God. You cannot write anyone off. 
You cannot, and in your own life, you can't write anyone off. The mercy is the power and the anointing of God. If you can, you can tap into it, you re- and when you, when you realize, God, I need your mercy. You know what mercy says? Mercy says, where I'm not making it, where I fall short, where I'm not connecting, where I'm not where I need to be to receive that which I need from heaven, I'm asking mercy to make up the difference. And I'm saying that mercy, let me tell you what, if God could do that through Paul, and Paul, there's many scriptures I could go through where Paul talked about the mercy of God, that he was there because of the mercy of God. He understood it. Can you imagine Paul preaching to congregations and their children, because he he, his, his ministry was 30-some years, and he's preaching to congregations, the children of families that he killed the mom and dad are now in the congregation. And the Bible said, my conscience is clear. Why? Because he understood about the mercy of God. And we can point our fingers at Paul and say, I tell you what, that guy should be hung from by his toes. That guy needs it. But let me just say this. Every one of us has been shown mercy. There's not a person in here that it wasn't the mercy of God that brought you to where you are. It's the mercy of God. It's the mercy of God. And, you know, and God says, I want you to see me. I'm a God of mercy It says in Proverbs, it says, if you conceal a sin, you won't prosper. But if you confess your sin, God said, you'll receive God's mercy. When you confess your faults, you receive God's mercy. And you don't get what you deserve. Now, grace, on the other hand, is receiving something you didn't earn. Is receiving something you don't deserve. From the, good, from the goodness of God, which is his anointing, his power, and his acceptance. But mercy is the heartbeat of God. And we need to understand it. And we need to have a cry for mercy. And we need to obtain this mercy. It says in Hebrews 4, it says, Come boldly to the throne of grace that you might obtain mercy. Like it's something tangible. Because it is. You remember blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus got healed with a cry of mercy. He said, Jesus, our son of David, have mercy on me. That was his cry. Have mercy on me. I'm a beggar. I'm blind. I can't see. But I got to have your mercy. We don't know whatever happened to blind Bartimaeus. We don't know how he got to that state. Maybe he was born blind. Maybe not. Jesus said to one man, he said, listen, go and sin no more after he healed him. Let the worst thing come upon you. Some sins can open up the door. To sickness, and I always tell people, listen, you better throw yourself on the mercy of God. If you're fighting sickness, you go to God and you get your whole heart clear so that you can receive the mercy of God. And you know, blind Bartimaeus, it was the cry of mercy. Let me say this they, we need to put faith in the mercy of God, we need to trust in the mercy of God. That God, you're a God of mercy first and foremost, you're full of compassion, you're slow to anger. And Lord, I need your mercy. It's a cry. Because sometimes when we work by faith, if I got a connection for electricity, I've got to have wire one connect to wire two. They've got to make a connection. Otherwise, there'll be no transfer of electricity. And faith says, if you have the faith of God, if you can say this mountain, be removed and be the cast and see, and shall down his heart. But believe those things which he says should come to pass. You'll have what you say. Is that not true? But you've got to get the wires connected. If the wire connects in the spirit, if your faith connects with God's power, actually healing is spiritual. Actually, can can we boil this right down? Healing, the healer's in you. And really, it's your spirit needs to capture that healing power that's within you. But it can be manifest in meetings, it can be manifest by the laying on of hands. But healing is spiritual. When Jesus went to that cross, it was, he took your sicknesses in his spirit. He took, I'm telling you, the curses come from the spirit. Sin is spiritual. You might, it might be uh, operated in, in the natural, in the flesh, in the soul. But the root of it is spiritual. The root of sickness is spiritual. So this thing about mercy, big, 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 big. 
I remember when I was standing in faith how much condemnation I received from Christians, especially pastors. Here's what I'd get. We were at a very large pastor. We were friends with this pastor for years. And we're sitting at a table, and he says to me, he said, now cancer comes from only two ways, um, unforgiveness and low self-esteem. Uh, which do you think it is? Which, she said, which do you think it is? My wife's an oncology nurse for 25 years. She spoke up. Well, I want to ask you a question. <laughs> a one-year-old baby gets cancer. Was it low self-esteem <laughs> or unforgiveness? I would get calls from people, quote, well-meaning ministers, and they would kind of talk, so how is it going? I had one preacher tell me, well, you paint yourself in a corner. I said, what do you mean? You know, you faith people. What do you mean? When he hung up the phone, my faith was here. So I learned quickly. If I'm going to receive the freeling power of God, I have got to get away from people that are full of negativity, full of doubt, full of unbelief, critical, uh, um, condemning. You know what I'm saying? I just got to cut them off. So I wouldn't answer their calls. I would see so-and-so. I said, no, I was at an eight in my faith when I hung up the last time I was at a four. So I'm not doing that again because I got to fight for my faith. But here's the mercy of God. The mercy of God is that I kept going to meetings. Went to Norval Hayes' meeting, went to Brother Hagin's meeting, I went to Rodney Howard Brown meeting. I hung around the anointing of God. And then one day, I was in front of Brother Rodney. And he shouted at me, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And I was struck dumb because the anointing of God was so powerful on me. I couldn't say a word. What's wrong with you? I couldn't say a word. My wife chimes in. He's fighting fourth stage cancer. Even though you get treatment, they tell you, you know, well, I had people with just what I had, they were dying left and right of me. So he took his five, I see, this is big for me. I like to just, took his hand, put it on my chest. When he did, five liquid streams of fire shot out of these five fingers and shot out my back like five bullets. This is where that whole tumor was right here. And, you know, I was thrown to the ground for hours. We had like four or five hundred people in a big gymnasium. They were all sitting around tables. Think about it. Tables, chairs, claws, the whole thing. Special, you know, speakers, tables, platforms. I was so gone, like I was, you know what I was? I'm looking back, I was floating in liquid love. I felt like I was like, I mean, like, don't get me out of this. This is like, it was like heaven. And when I came to, I had my one eye, my one eye was on the floor, and I opened this eye. There wasn't one stick of furniture, not one table, not one chair, not one person. It was completely empty. I'm sitting there, where everybody go? I'm laying there, and then out of the corner of my eye, after about a minute or two, comes a, a janitor <laughs> with a big six-foot mop. He walks right on by, real slow, disappears. My mind said, what was that? <laughs> I kept lying there, and here he comes the second time. He disappeared. The third time, I said, sir, what are you doing? He said, mister, I've cleaned this whole gymnasium. I've mopped the whole floor. But the only piece I lack is the part you're lying on. <laughs> so he was circling me, <laughs> waiting for me to get up. I said, sir, if you'll just get me up, I'll get to going. And he did, and I did. But I look back at that. That for me was my tipping point. And I'm telling you, uh, I learned so much that there's a cry. See, God will be moved by mercy. The Syrophoenician woman, she came to Jesus. She said, Jesus, have mercy upon me. That was her cry. Have mercy upon me. 
And Jesus wouldn't listen to her because his first call was to the Jews on the first portion of his ministry, to the Jews. And she said, no, my daughter is, has got a demon and I need you to heal her, set her free. And Jesus wouldn't do it. He ignored her. And then he finally said, it's not right to throw bread to the dogs. She says, well, call her a dog. He said, well, even the dogs eat the crumbs underneath the table. But you think about what she was doing. She was crying out for mercy. And it got the attention of Jesus. Now think about what, what mercy did. Her cry for mercy. In the dispensation of time, it wasn't time for the healing of the Gentiles. She was pushing the envelope to say, I need it now. Move it now for me because of my cry for mercy. It lets me know that you operate your life in mercy. Not only will you receive mercy, but I'm telling you, you can obtain mercy to find what, what you need from God. And let me explain what, what, what's that like. Instead of having to get the wire here, you make a bigger landing spot for faith. You tell God, God, it's a cry of mercy. Where I'm failing to connect, where I'm not measuring up, where I don't understand it, my cry is for your mercy. That you would touch me through mercy. This is very real to me. Because I walked through that year and the Lord, if I learned some things, and one of the biggest things I learned was you cry. It's a cry of faith for the mercy of God. Whatever situation you're in, you say, God, is not working. This is not working. This is not happening. Ask him for his mercy. When you cry for his mercy, it's a cry from humility. I don't have the answer. I can't figure this out. I don't know the way out. And you, can, you don't discount the word. You're not discounting your faith stand. But you're saying, God, I need the mercy. Because I'm getting tired. And things don't seem to work. I've got to have your power in my life. It's a cry of mercy. So it means a lot when the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace that you might obtain mercy. And we need to operate in mercy in our life. And we need to realize, you know, Lord, I may not have done everything I should have be, uh, that, I, that I should be doing. I may be falling short of where I should be. But I know who you are. You're a God of great mercy. And I can't tell you, as a minister, a lot of times you've got to preach in different places, different situations. And uh, China's being one. There, that, that was a test always going. But other ministries, I've always found out, um, like if you're on a mission trip, and I don't have the time to fully prepare, but I've got to preach that night. And I believe in preparing. I cry out, God, I need mercy here. I need a download from heaven that's supernatural. And I'll step in here. I want to see the mercy of God. God will give me something like, in like, I can't describe it to you. It's like in 60 seconds, whoop, a whole sermon. Got my text, my theme, da, 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 examples. Rump. That happens a lot. Because I, I, I fully believe there's more power available to us, more strength available to us, more healing available to us. If we'll humble ourselves and just say, God, I'm, it's, it's a cry for mercy. This one is a cry for mercy. I need the mercy of God. And it's a place of rest because you say, you know, God, this is bigger than me. People and the issues and this, everything. Amen? But you say, God, I need your mercy. And something about the condemnation goes off you. You know, it's like realizing, yep, God, I don't measure up. <laughs> I know, God, I'm not doing everything I should be doing. Yeah, God, I'm not dotting my E's and crossing, dotting my T's and crossing my I's like I should. But if you're not careful, 
if you're a faith legalist, I'm telling you one thing. This is why you're not receiving. Let me tell you why. And they go through all this stuff here. And, uh, but there's no life for joy in them. You know what I'm saying? They become, like, they become wooden. They become like... I don't want to ever go there. That's like, it's, it's, it's like you can be right, but you're dead right. There's no life in your rightness. Does that make sense? You're religious. And, 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 uh, and you're, just, you're just missing the mark. But somehow, when we understand God's mercy, and He is a God of mercy, and He wants to show you mercy, and you can get it if you ask for it. Does anybody need mercy? I need mercy. You want to receive, I tell you what, some things in your life where you are right now, you need help from heaven. You need help. God, I'm going to be a blind Bartimaeus. I'm going to be a Syrophoenician woman. I'm going to be, you know, the mercy of God. Really, if you take a look at all the miracles, it's all nothing but the mercy. Nothing but the mercy. Nothing but the mercy of God. Jesus, everything operated in was the mercy of God. When Jesus stood on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. And they don't know what they do. That was the mercy of God. It's the mercy of God. He didn't send 12 legions of angels and whip the tar out of the soldiers. You know, if you think about it, Jesus lived a righteous life. He didn't need to go to the cross. He took the cup of suffering out of mercy for you and me. Everything God does is from his mercy. You've got to get this. Everything he does is from his mercy. We deserve nothing. Every blessing is through the mercy. It's the mercy. It's the mercy. Yeah, but I got it by faith. Let me tell you what, what preceded it and was after it is the mercy of God. And the mercy flows from the source of God's love. So we need to just develop ourselves in the mercy. Immerse ourselves in the mercy. Show mercy to people. Show mercy to people. So important. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So Father, I thank you. Lord, I just... Um, mercy. Mercy. Just, for, just lift up your hands a minute. Lord, we're here tonight. You told us we can come to the throne of God boldly. The throne of God is a source of power and everything we need. That we might obtain mercy. Lord, teach us about your mercy. Teach us about the compassion of God to reach out beyond our failures, beyond our shortcomings, beyond our missteps, beyond where we're failing to connect like we should with you. But oh God, your mercy is great. We need your mercy. And Lord, today we receive the mercy of God. We're going to walk in the mercy. I believe God's going to touch, is touching people here that need a physical healing. The power of God is here. Lord, by the mercy of God, let the power of heaven flow in Jesus' mighty name. Let the anointing come down through the mercy of God. Through the mercy of God. Set us free in your mercy. Bring healing to us through your mercy. Let your power be released. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to your mercy you saved us. It was your mercy that saved us. It's your mercy can heal us. It's your mercy can free us. We release our life to you. We belong to you. We belong to you. We belong to you. And through mercy, we refuse all condemnation, all guilt. We refuse all heaviness. 
We refuse it because we're receiving the mercy of God. Mercy of God. Hallelujah. Just say it. Just say, I receive God's mercy from the throne of heaven. I'm going to live in it. I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to dispense it. Hallelujah. Find His presence is here. God's mercy opens doors of favor. Increase shall come in Jesus' name. Finances shall come. Supernatural supply. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, thank you for your mercy. Flow through her body, the power of the Holy Ghost. Shana Morusiki to Baba. Hasa Maradia la Baba Rosatoya. Ajala Marusikia. Jina Mamarosiki de Ba. Sana Marusiki is a bit to be. Baba Bia Lemiaso Rene de Alacoya. Riala Mama Rosikidia. In the name Chutala Barositi. Receive the mercy of God. Shona Borositi. On the Mialas to Jola Barositi. Ola Barositi Elaman. Jala Mamorodi, Jina Morododo, Ojuna Maradana. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the power of God in our brother. Thank you, it's flowing through his body. In Jesus' name. Hata la Maurusikiti, Bora Nasakia, Shula Baria la Bibisiki. Mama Masakiolo, Daddy, he touches you. Strength complete, the healing Jesus. Receive it completely into your body. Strength to every joint, strength to every muscle. In Jesus' name, the power of God. Supernatural, every need supplied. In the name of Jesus. Oza maha rosiki te boron usuko te kedada mabasa kada. Barani sikiolo kodoya. Complete strength back in your body. The healing virtue of Jesus. Receive that mercy of God right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Frank. Rosikasa. Strength to your legs and your joints in Jesus' name. The mercy of God raises you up. You will run, you will dance unto the Lord. This is not too difficult for Jesus. You understand that? It's not too difficult for Jesus. You receive that anointing even now. In Jesus' name. You take it by the faith of God. You take it 
take it. Healing virtue flows out of you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Karen, that anointing of God. Let me tell you this. Borona sakiolo borono sotaiji. Ajelama rosiki. Developed in the mighty love of God. He touches you. He heals you. He frees you. He makes things right by His touch. Hasam Hotele Kadaya. Release of everything. This is going to be a new year. You're going to run this year. This year you're coming out of the stocks and you're going to go. The weights are falling off. The pain, the sorrow, the grieving. You're going to cry out for his mercy. He's giving you great anointing and grace through that cry of mercy. A release. In Jesus' name. A release. It's in the spirit. That knot in your stomach is being dissolved by the glory of God. You know, things we carry, I tell you, in our hearts, it's like a burden on the inside of us. Weighs us down. Takes the joy away. Takes His presence away. If I said, I receive... The mercy of God. I don't earn it. I don't deserve it. But I receive it. In Jesus' name. And I receive grace to help. In time of need. In Jesus' name. Mercy opens the door. Yeah, it does. Because it says, you know what, God? It's totally you. It's just totally you. It's totally you. I just got this new phrase I keep going over. I'm not God. I'm not God. And whenever he gets, you know what? I'm giving this to you, God. I give the whole thing to you. I'm not God. I can't figure this out. I'm not God, but you can. Let's all stand to our feet, shall we? We thank God for our guests. Why his presence is so real. He's touching hearts tonight. He's moving burdens tonight. He's empowering people tonight. He's healing people tonight. In Jesus' name. I tell you, when he just shows up like this, the Holy Spirit shows up. So you got to yield and say, Lord, I'm taking what I need. Because of your mercy to me, I just receive it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. With every eye closed, before we dismiss, if you're here today and you are not right with God, you don't have peace with God, you don't know the Lord, or you're just away from his fellowship, you don't have peace, if that's you, slip your hand up. Okay, we're good. Well, there's one. I see that hand. Thank you. Anybody else? Let's just say this prayer. Everybody say it out loud. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus I, love I love you. I want you. I want you. Tonight, Tonight, I repent of my sin. I, repent of my sin. I turn my back from sin. I from sin. And I turn my heart to Jesus Christ. Lord, come into my life. I believe you're the son of God I believe you rose again for me give me a holy passion for the things of God a hunger for your word 
Let me share Jesus wherever I go. Fill me with your fire. Use my life for your glory. I'm not turning back. I am born again. I'm on my way to heaven. Jesus lives in my heart. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. For that one who raised hand, come see me afterwards. But we prayed that prayer for just for one all day long. So, Father, we just lift our hearts to you tonight. We thank you for your mercy for us. We thank you, Lord. You give us, and you give us, and you give us out of your great mercy. You're so graceful, gracious to us, so compassionate that your mercy will endure forever. You'll always show mercy. And so, Lord, show us as we go to work tomorrow. We claim the mercy of God. We're dealing with people. We're going to show mercy, but we're going to step into the mercy. Thank you for increasing that presence of God upon our life. Help us to walk in a new tenderness with before the Holy Spirit, a new yieldedness. And Lord, we believe for the breakout. These 90 days, we're going to continue to see continued breakouts in every life in this house. In Jesus' name, amen.